everybody, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Guys, welcome back to episode 44, I believe, of this podcast so far. We're ranking up in the numbers, people. We're ranking. And today we have a guest that was on already. She featured in um, a, a podcast not too long ago, actually only a few podcasts ago with Greg Young. It is Saoirse Smith. Hello, Saoirse. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? All good, you? All good, all good. Um, So, Sasha, for the people that probably didn't see the uh, other podcast, this is your your podcast. This is like, literally, this is all about you. Um, So, uh, Oh, God. (laughs) If if Greg is watching Greg, this is not your time to shine. This is (laughs) Sasha's time to uh, shine. So, please, uh, introduce yourself for the people out there. Uh, my name is Saoirse uh, Smith. I am a sit-down comedian. Uh, if you're wondering why I say sit-down comedian, um, I have a disability. I have cerebral palsy and, you know, it'd be a bit ironic if I call myself, you know, a stand-up, so I call myself sit-down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, yeah, so um, that's what I wanted to do because last time on the other podcast, um, I did say to you off uh, recording off screen and so like that is it already if we had you on the podcast and we can talk about it because for me personally i don't i i want people on so they can talk to me and they discuss topics that i don't know much about and i'd rather i'd like a lot of people out there to understand just like myself and um, that if i don't so i'm learning along as well and um, along with anybody else that is watching right now so um Please, could you give us a, a description of um, what would we, is a right called a disability? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I it's a disability. Like I I uh, call myself a disabled person. Um, you know. Um, but to be honest, I don't think like my disability is cerebral palsy. So, um, I was diagnosed at like a year and a half, which sometimes you can be diagnosed from birth if you're premature. Mm. You know that could happen afterwards, but it's it just depends on the person. It it's so different for many different people. Mm-hmm. Like no one is the same, and um, for me, it affects my left arm, um, my right leg, <laughs> uh, more than my left. I can't walk on my own without assistance. Yeah. Um, but I can, mm-hmm. and I have spasms. Uh, which I say to people, I have jazz hands on stage, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. you know, but I, it's it's grand, like you know what I mean. As you know, like everyone else, it kind of gets worse with my age. But you know, you have to maintain as best you can. Yeah, because I, I I don't understand that. I I did want to ask you, um, you did answer it there already. But for the likes of that, you said one and a half. So you were diagnosed with, with, for when you were about one and a half, is it? Yeah. Yeah, for the likes of that. And growing up, I do want to reach back from growing up. And so when it came to going to school, if you don't mind, it, it, I remember I said, you said you're an open book anyway, so you're a good sport yeah. anyway. Um, I, I sounded like an old man there. You're a great sport. <laughs> I don't know. I never said that before in my Bridget, life. You're so just so. great. I never <laughs> said that before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I never thought I would. Um, but uh, when you were in school or when you started off going to school and um, when, when you kind of had the idea of going, right, I, I'm aware of this, I'm aware that other kids will see um, mm. will see that I have a disability or so. Um, and probably, you know, kids, they don't understand at that time. Uh, kids uh, don't. For when you went to school, what, what was it like? For, what was it like in school for you? Well, actually, I went to a special needs school, actually. Mm-hmm. I went to CRC, so there were, everybody was the exact same. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everybody had a disability, be it physical or intellectual. We all had a disability, so that was never an issue. Um, the only times I would kind of like, I would see myself as different was, like, my mom was extra protective of me, so, like... Yeah. I wasn't allowed to leave the house. Like hmm. I'd see a lot of kids playing on the street. I wasn't allowed to do that because she was so worried. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. And I was bullied by other kids that were on my road. Yeah. Because of the disability. Hmm. That's the only times I would be aware that I was different, if yeah. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Within my own circle, I was like everyone else. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which is good and bad in a sense because yeah. like, because I was in a special needs school, you're kind of institutionalized. So you don't know how to interact with anyone that is not in your little bubble. 
So when I left to go to college, I did not know how to speak to anyone. No. That wasn't, who didn't have a disability. Yeah. It was kind of, was it, was it out of fear, was it? It was kind of fear or anxiety or so, was it? Or a bit of anxious? It, like? was, it was strange. It was because I was bullied a lot as a kid, even in school by other people. Yeah. And it just kind of like, it was, it was nerves, it was fear. You know, it was kind of just like, oh, what are they going to say? Yeah. And then the way I break them down is I'd, I'd respond in humor. Yeah. With my disability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once I realized, oh, I can be funny. Yeah. I can make them comfortable. This is yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's also a defense mechanism as well. A lot of yeah. comedians growing up, uh, if they were bullied or so in school, a lot of them yeah. were bullied. Um, they would use humor to get out of the bullying um, to make the bully laugh. Yeah. And when you realize that when you start making jokes about your disability and you got people laughing, did it... Did they, the people on the road or anything, did they kind of like understand that? Oh, wait, she's, she's, a, she's killed. Like she's, did they understand more or was it, did it still continue? Um, no, it kind of stopped as I became a teenager and I got more confidence in myself being mm. a bit funny and having a joke. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. But <laughs> also like if you're, I, when, cause when I was in school, I shot up when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. I was taller than all the boys. Yeah. So when I was taller than all of them, they they left me alone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were yeah, like, "Oh, yeah. we're not messing with her." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fucking going bait. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um and yeah, so for the likes of that, um, so I want to I want to go back a bit to um yeah. what we were talking about about um going to that different school. Um, so when yeah. you when you when you went into that school, what would be like? What would be a daily, what would be the daily thing? What would you go in and you, what was like the most common thing to do uh, in the day? Um, like it'd be kind of a, like, I don't, like, I don't know what it's like in a mainstream school personally. Yeah. I would have preferred to go to mainstream, to be honest. Yeah. Um, the only reason I went to college is because a teacher told me that I should go to college and she mm. pushed me for that. But basically, it, I'm not going to mention the school because I don't want to get into it. No, 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 like, no, you're okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, like we'd have our normal lessons during the day. Yeah. Um, when we're like we had for, in that school, you would start at five, which is your your prime your kindergarten. Yeah. And then you go to primary school in the same school, and then you go to the senior end of the school. Yeah. So in the primary, you would just be in your own class, about seven of us, seven of us in each class. Yeah. And then when you went to the senior end, you would go to like your history class. Mm-hmm. And your your maths, but yeah. what kind of annoyed me sometimes was they would have higher level maths, which I'd be in, or higher level English. Yeah. So now everybody was getting the same education I was. Yeah, I get you. So yeah. and I and I would be actually helping some of the kids in the other lower classes with yeah. their English, and that, which I'm happy to do. Yeah. But I felt like they should be getting that same education. Yeah, they should be getting the same help as well. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's I, I think that's nice as well that you saw these kids and yeah. you, you taught that in your head and you were like right mm-hmm. I think that everybody deserves uh, to have the same education that I'm going to go out of my way even though probably at the time this was stressful mm-hmm. out on you enough with your higher levels yeah. higher levels is like I, I don't not even or I don't uh, foundation levels and all I'm not when yeah. I went to school I was not I'm not a bright person in school I hate yeah. school and stuff but um to the fact that you went out your way, even though you had enough on your plate to help other people, it tells it says a lot about you as a person. It was just it was a natural thing to do. Like I liked a lot of the people there, and I wanted to help them. Like the thing is, the misconception is if you see someone who maybe is nonverbal, mm. you think they don't understand or they can't communicate, but yeah. they can. Yeah, they just communicate differently. Yeah, and they're intelligent. And like there was one guy who was the one of only in his year who was non-verbal to do his junior cert mm-hmm. and got great marks on it mm-hmm. and that was purely true computer so you can it can be done mm-hmm. yeah. so but like even me i didn't do my leaving cert because they couldn't accommodate me to do my leaving right. so i ended up doing seven years in college oh, to get a degree yeah, yeah. and for the people out there that don't know could you can you tell us what degree you went for and and so yeah, I have a BA in uh, performing arts. Oh, so I have a Bachelor of Honours in theatre. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you, you do like, I do want to get into that. I, I'll get into that um, a, a bit onwards for that. But um, so for the likes of when, when you start growing up, um, when you start growing up and you start hanging around with different people, um, what what was it like um, when it came to the years of, um, you know, liking guys or so like that as well? And you, you, you kind of, you, did you have the feeling of going, right, this could be a bit more difficult than I, I thought it would be? Like when it came to them feelings with the guys and trying to get into guys or so like that? Because I'm not sure, I'm just, I'm just, I'm pretty presuming that you're, you're um, straight, yeah, obviously. Uh, yeah, I am, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying, because I'm just, because you literally said to no, anybody and they're okay. like, how fucking dare you? And then they're like, I knew that already, but, um, um, so when it came, when it came into that and it came into the teenage years and kind of getting them feeling towards guys, what was yeah. that? Was this the anxious and the worrying even getting more or was it, were you actually confident in that stage? Like, did it not affect you at all? Um, I was very insecure. Yeah. Um, because I was an overweight teenager as well, so I was very insecure. And but my first boyfriend was in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. But um, my first real serious boyfriend again was in a wheelchair. But he had ended up in a wheelchair. Right. Okay. So he had had the experience of going out and stuff like that. But he was great, and we're still friends now, like yeah. ten years later on. And then the rest of my relationships were actually able-bodied people, so yeah. they weren't disabled at all. Mm-hmm. And the only thing regarding that one relation, one the relationship, or both those relationships was, um, well, one of them, their family thought that this person would end up having to care for me and look after me and yeah. all this and didn't accept me. Yeah. And that brought a lot of strain on the relationship. And yeah. unfortunately, it ended, which mm-hmm. is very hard on me because I was really... You really like in love with this person, yeah, yeah. And then that's the second person again didn't want to show me as his girlfriend, right? And I, uh, stronger then, said, Look, I deserve better, you yeah. know. I might be in a wheelchair, but I deserve to be treated like every other woman, you know. Yeah. I'm in a wheelchair so yeah. well, but like, yeah, I you don't, have I don't you have needs, you, you don't want the need. Yeah. Fuck that fucking guy. Fuck him. Uh, <laughs> wanker. Excuse me. Yeah. This fucking asshole. Sorry, it's the first time I ever fucking let out like that on the end of the that, that annoys me so much. But the fact that you yeah. said, fuck you. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there is a lot of people out there that take that shit that go, oh, okay. Yeah. So the fact that you knew that and you said, fuck, do you know what? I'm fucking better than this. I, I deserve more. Yeah. Than that. The fact that you, you you knew that and you went with it, it's not the fact that you just talked about it, but you stayed there. It's the fact that you talked yeah. about it and you said, right, I have to say something about this. Uh, I, that, yeah. That's something fucking respectful right there. That's fucking respect, sister. <laughs> that's what that is right there. Um, yeah, so um, so when you when you went on from that, um, from yeah. likes of that, um, did you did you start getting more confident and then in relation knowing that right I'm accepted of who I am and if people don't like that then go fuck themselves. To be honest, like and I'm being I'm being very honest with this, like I mm. haven't had a proper relationship for like two three years because mm. unfortunately again like you meet people who you know especially now in dating terms like I my last boyfriends I met like in person we didn't meet online and online dating I hate yeah. You know, the weird questions you get, it's ridiculous. So, yeah. like, any kind of dating I've had, I just said to myself, look, I'm just going to focus on me, do my own stuff. Mm-hmm. Independent. And when the time comes again, I want to date someone, I'll date them. But it took a lot for me to say, I'm actually happy by myself. Yeah. Then to be in a relationship where I'm not treated properly or respected mm-hmm. or anything like that. And that was a big thing for me to learn. Yeah. Well, come here, I'm going to do this. <laughs> yes bitch yes bitch yes well fair play to you for that because there is a lot of girls out there that are fucking there's like ditch me they, they don't have any disability they think the fucking world is coming around them they, they have the fucking perfect life and they still like take take that shit um, from guys so fucking fair play to you for that fair play fair plate I say I keep saying fair play <laughs> and it's fair play <laughs> fucking catching yourself out and everything um but anyway um yeah so so when you start doing that when i do this is kind of going off the topic altogether but i just wanted to know about that for myself and so and i did find yeah, it yeah, no problem. i always wanted to know that 
and um, for someone mm. like that what, what's it like dating dating wise but i'm gonna go now yeah. to for as you said is that you're a sit-down comedian i want to talk yeah. about that so how did you get in how did you get into that how did you get in? well sorry <laughs> um i was working a really crappy job right in a call center and i say this in my set yeah. and it's hell Mm-hmm. It's so destroying and you're just seen as like a number and I missed performance so much. And um not to be too dark or depressing or like that, but my brother had passed mm-hmm. away a year or two prior. Yeah. So it was like I need to keep on living and doing my own and make myself happy as well. Yeah. So I was struggling with that and I needed to find something that made me happy. Mm-hmm. So I looked up this thing called You Talk Funny done by Kieran McMahon brilliant man and uh you know he was fantastic and um i was put to him by mags and q another comedian and it just went from there i ended up doing a culture night with from with that top was organized by tony ferns mm-hmm. oh yeah tony. that was my mm-hmm. first ever gig and mm-hmm. then i did the you talk funny uh, showcase after doing the workshops there like mm-hmm. And I loved it. Like it's it's like a drug. You get the laugh. Would you get the, the laugh? Rush. Like, yeah, the, the rush. rush. Yeah. yeah. I, I had it I had a thing in uh, my yoke. Um I have this saying that I say at the end. I goes, I don't drink. I never I never drank. I never smoked yeah. nothing. Never done any drugs. But mm. if I were to experience drugs and the high of it, I think mm. like for the likes of yourself you'd know as well when you get that laugh it's like literally sniffing it's like getting that laugh of cocaine mm. or something and you're just like yes you just get a high buzz from it you get that good feeling yeah. and you're on that feeling but isn't it weird that you can go from your day is normal and then you yeah. know you have this gig and you go up and perform yeah. and all these butterflies and all these jitters and all these and then you go up and stage and perform and then everything's great and you're on this buzz and then you go home and you're like how the fuck am i going to calm down from this like it's yeah, you, have, you have to you have to go back to reality you have to go back to reality then to get me and it's fucking just like oh well next gig i can get that feeling again and i think that's what it is it's like we're fucking addicts towards uh, laughter we need we love the laugh we yeah. love to entertain people and that's that that's what i find interesting as well but you did say to me before that you went to the edinburgh fringe festival is it i did indeed yeah with uh, connor walsh yeah that is crazy and it, you got to perform yeah. there did you me and Connell, we uh, did a show together. We did the full three weeks. Yeah. Three uh, weeks? We, three weeks what? in Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah. Jeez, I thought it you only done like one set or something. Fucking fair play. Three weeks. And uh, we had our show called Validation Row. And it was a split, split show. Mm. And we had guest comedians on. But like three weeks, full gigs, like over 20 gigs. Jesus I actually Christ. got laryngitis when I was over there. Fucking hell. I lost my voice. Yeah. yeah. I had to train for three months before going to Edinburgh because the hills. Oh my god! Your training, yeah. Oh my god! But it was such. It was just a brilliant feeling, and it teaches you a lot as a comedian hmm. because the audience over there are so different to Irish. Uh, the Irish comedy. The, uh, the humor, Irish like audience. the humor, the sense of humor, is it? The sense of humor is different. Hmm. They're just different altogether because you're not just getting people from Edinburgh. You're getting people from America and other parts of the uk and everything else like that it's they're all so different so you you would say you got mixed would you get mixed uh, reactions and stuff like that is it is yeah know, like yeah. you know like some you'd get a great belly of laughs and you know then no night you might not get any or you might get some because mm-hmm. you like my set is based around my disability so i say like cripple and spa and everything and they're like <laughs> yeah. oh my god she said that yeah and you're you there going ha <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah so but it's so it's a different kind of sense of humor but it was such a great experience i'd do it again maybe not as for as long yeah but definitely do it again but for your first time doing what over 20 shows yeah. you're doing a max of three weeks like yeah that must have been so cool and did they did they um did they organize this where you're gonna stay or do you have to did you have to get up your own money and stuff like that oh yeah no it's free fringe so they give you the venue you don't pay for the venue but you have to pay for your accommodation your flights everything and i nearly i nearly had to go home because i got accommodation through um uh what airbnb yeah and it turned out not being wheelchair accessible so i was in tears i'm gonna have to go home you're walking you're going in the house and you're looking up upstairs like for fuck's sake what did i tell you as bastards like (laughs) like, uh, no but 
I got student accommodation. It cost me over two grand for student Jesus. accommodation. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. But was it, at the end of the day, I'm going to ask you a question, be honest. At yeah. the end of the day, was it worth the experience? Oh, yeah. It was worth every penny. Yeah. So there you go. Like, yeah. I, even though it's a lot yeah. of money and so, you would, literally, there's a lot of fucking people that want to do stand up and in their yeah. lifetime, they won't get to do that or they will never get to go out of Ireland. You, you're doing stand up a year and a half, isn't it? Near two, yeah. Near two. And you already went over to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and done that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Like, that's fucking good. <laughs> that's an accomplishment. If people, if you write a CV and they say, what's yeah. your accomplishments? If that's not the top one, do not go for the job. Do not go for a job because you need to show. And if they don't accept that, then just tell them, <laughs> say, I don't want the job. And then turn around and yeah. fucking go out of there. Fucking, fuck. Oh. But since like doing comedy, I refuse to do any more call centers. I just cannot yeah. do it again. Yeah. If, but, uh, what 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 would be? Would you get the kind of? Uh, is it because of the kind of abuse that would be calling them on the phone if that payment didn't go through or something? Was it? No, no. Basically, I would be the the excuse the language. I'd be the fucker on the phone ring. It's like, yeah. hi, would you like to receive a bit of info on this thing yeah. today? Like your your mobile phone or. And then you'd be like, oh, for God's sake, is this one again? Go away. <laughs> yeah. Can we, can we, I know, I know, right? I, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but can we yeah. do a role play of what would actually happen? Hello, customer service. How may I help you? This is the first ever time on this fucking channel that we've done something like this. So please, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll call the phone, right? right? So all right. ring, 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 ring. Hello? Hi, uh, my name is Saoirse. I'm just calling on behalf of your mobile phone company today. Would you like to receive a bit of info to, on, on your mobile phone company? Um, I'm a bit busy right now. Uh, kids are, one's hanging on me tit and the other one's running around with washing. Um, can, what can you say about it quick? Is there any problems? It would take about 20 minutes, but I'll fly through as best I can if you're willing to stay on the phone with me. Sorry, love. Husband's coming back and everything. If I don't make the show, he's going to kill me again. Yeah, go on, right, I'd say, go on, bye, bye. I guarantee you, you have some, I don't know what that was, but I guarantee you something like that. If someone answered the phone to me and said, sorry, one of the kids are hanging out the left chair, I'd go, right, see you later. I'd fucking, I wouldn't even, i go, Jesus Christ. But, um, yeah, um, I'd say, I'd say it's bloody hell, because the only, I've only ever worked in retail, and I hate people. Like, I hate, I don't hate people, but I hate people. When I work, I hate people. Anybody yeah. walks in the shop, I hate them. Um, but stuff oh, like this, I love doing. Um, but no, how, doing that voice again, that gave me a bit of PTSD. I'm not going <laughs> to... It was literally like, hello, it's this. Oh, my God, no. Everybody yeah. has that phone. Everybody has that polite, posh phone voice, don't they? Oh, yeah. Like, my oh, mom would no. be like, yeah. My mom would literally be like, you listen here, you little bastard. If you don't fucking <laughs> go upstairs and answer and clean your fucking room, ring, 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 I'll bloody kill you. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, you all right, kids? All right, yeah. I'll come here, I'll talk to you later. I'll fucking murder you. That's what they're like. They, they yeah. kid. Like, everybody has that voice. And even though we say, I'm never going to be like that, we, we end up being like that. It's just being polite, isn't it? It's selling yourself. It's being a different person and kind of selling yeah. yourself to get that sale. And we, with yeah. them jobs, were you, were you getting a lot of sales with it? Um, the first job I did very well. Like I only left that because of, like I was working 5 to 9 p.m. Oh, in yeah. Blackrock. Yeah. And I, I live in Clontarf, so I didn't go home till 11, so I left to get a yeah. job in town. Yeah. And the other place, oh, don't even get me started. Yeah. Um, yeah that was that a bad, was a bad, yeah, bad place to work. Bad, but um, I, to be honest, the last day of the place I was working in Blackrock, it was so funny. This this guy, right, he was like, is this a sex line, is it? And I said, no, you fucking I'd dirty bastard. I'd say, yeah, you dirty bastard. It's five <laughs> euro for defeat, you dirty elk. Yeah. That's what I'd be like, <laughs> I'd take the piss out of him. Yeah, uh, go on, no, go on. But, no, my boss turned to me. She's like, I can't give out to you. It's your last day. <laughs> go, go. Oh, I'd, oh, I'd put absolutely. If it was, especially if it was the last day, I'd take the piss out of him. I'd say, yeah, yeah hold on, and I'll, I'll bring it towards <laughs> someone that can talk to you. And then say, sorry, <laughs> uh, Vanessa, yeah, yeah, line two, and it's your boss, and you click on it, and she's like, do you do this? And it's like, who the fuck is that? It was all right. it's a weird fella. It's mad. I uh, watch, yeah, I watch Mrs. Brown's boys, and there's a part I where love the that. fella, the fella yeah. rings and he goes, well, Do you want to meet me by the bins? And uh, he goes, Yeah, he goes, Dirty bats ring me, do you want to meet me by the bins or something? I walked to the <laughs> shop, he didn't even show me his witty or something. Oh, it was so funny. It was so good. 
Um, but yeah, sorry, we're kind of dialing off there. For like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so for right now, I want to ask your opinion yeah. on what's happening right now because you're a comedian that um, can't yeah. go out and do the work. Um, mm. So um, how has uh, quarantine affected your, I would call this a job, because you're yeah. going towards something and you've already done so much. So how is this affecting you with the likes of the quarantine and not being able to um, do these gigs? Um, it's affecting morale sometimes a little bit because you miss the interaction, you miss the buzz, you miss the talking with the public and, you know, having the laugh with them and getting them to laugh with you. Hmm. that's what i'm missing but like we are doing a bit of virtual comedy but it's not the same no. but it's it's a bit of a it's helping a little bit but it's not the same because you can't have the banter yeah that you would have had you know on stage you can't have a bit of chats with exactly. the audience afterwards yeah exactly i think so i think yeah a lot of a lot of comedians are trying and they're trying so hard because they don't want to stop doing it completely but it's yeah. just not the same it's not the same interaction it's you're not getting the same feedback you're not hearing the laughs it's just and when you make a joke yeah. and there's you just can't hear the laughter when you know it's going to be good it just kind of i'd say it kind of goes oh fuck here we go people are oh like, yeah like you know so it's it's with the Zoom as well, and like with the Zoom, because I did a, a gig. They have to mute all the audience because it interferes with the car, you know the different oh, pictures yeah. that show up. Yeah, and it's not the same because you want to hear the laugh, you want to hear the, the chuckle. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's what yeah. you try uh, try for. Hopefully, I said that word right. Try <laughs> for. Um, hopefully, that's what you want when you're going up to do them. You want to get a laugh. That's the reason you're doing stand up to enjoy yourself. But you also want a laugh. You also want to hear that laugh of what we were talking about earlier. But for the likes of uh, the quarantine and all, um, yeah. I've seen, I just literally seen earlier that you done tort, you walked up and down the back garden like Rocky, yeah. fucking torty <laughs> times going, ding, 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 go on, play the song on repeat. Um, but how, how is, I, I know we kind of talked about this already yeah. off camera, but how is keeping, keeping a fit and keeping the mind going um, during all of this as well? Um, oh, it's, it's very important for me to keep fit. Like that's my kind of how I relax as well. Yeah. But like, oh yeah, no, my legs are like jelly after today, <laughs> doing yeah. 30 lengths up and down. Yeah. But it's, it's so important for me just to keep up that strength because once this is all over, hmm. you know, I'm back out and I won't, if I don't keep up the strength, I won't be able to push anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. So it has to be done. So it's for for people out there that kind of like, you know, have the same disability or so. Do you have any advice for them that through through this time? Just do your best. Um, get any info if you have a trainer or something like that as well, just or if your physio to help you keep your strength up when you're in, in the indoors, like because it's so important, especially with cerebral palsy, like our muscles get tight, mm. you know, and they become sore. So it's best, it's always good to make sure you keep stretching your muscles and staying strong. And, you know, what, one thing for me is like, because I've gone to counselling, my counsellor said to me, always remember that you're not the only one going through this. Everyone is. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of people yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. 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 And just keep thinking, like, just remind yourself of that, you know, and every little, and just try your best. That's all you can do. Mm -hmm. Keep going like this. Yeah, there's that. I know there's a point in everybody's life that uh, mm. we we quit and we give up. But um, for for people like me, I I shouldn't have an excuse to go out and do that. You get me? And like for seeing people like yourself with your disability and um, still going out and still doing what you're doing, what you're doing, like. Mm. It's just, I'm, I swear to God, even if the cameras weren't on, I'd still say it's, it's inspirational. It actually is. Like, and I know we were saying this in the last one where if you give someone a compliment, they're like, oh, shut the fuck up and just move on. But I, I have to be honest, it is inspirational. You get me? It's kind of, it gives me motivation to go, fucking come on, man, I do 30 laps around the block. Like, you know, so yeah. um, likes of that. Um, but I do want to get into this segment. This is the last segment before yeah. um, we finish. So guys... Um, it is that time once again, guys. It's ghost stories. Oh, scary! Right there, shit. So this is um, the joke. I have two questions for you. Um, I ask, I tell, I ask all my guests, and it's okay if you don't have a story or not. But I, I, I like to talk about the topic a bit and get other people's opinions. Um, mm. I don't tell any of my guests when they're coming on. 
because yeah. I want to say that what the fuck this man guy's men or oh I like this like I want to see that reaction so um one do you have a ghost story and two do you believe in the afterlife or paranormal or something like that I do have somewhat of a ghost story yes. and yes I do <laughs> Like a lot of people, a few people said no, and a few people said yes. Yeah, so thank God you said yeah, because yeah. I like listening. To, and it's getting dark now, so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be yeah. scared as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. Right. I'll be quiet. Just go on. So, all right. Just quite. Nice. It was actually. Um, it's it's a sad one, but it's a nice one. I was in bed one night, and I had woken up, and I felt this hand on my face. A man's hand on my face. And I was paralyzed. I could not move. Nothing. And they stroked my cheek. And I said the word, Dad. And so I said, Dad, hand went away. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what age were you when this happened? 24. 24. If you don't mind me asking, you don't have to answer. Yeah. I'm 24 going 25 in July. What, uh, yeah. what age are you now? 28. 28. I wouldn't even think yeah. of it. Oh, that's a gone on. It's true. You do not look to me. You have youth in your woman. You have youth. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, um, fucking hell. That's scary. And when that happened after that, could you go back to sleep or did you kind of freak out and kind of go, right, oh, fuck, I don't know what to do now? Or did you go, Maybe I was half asleep. Maybe I was half awake. What did you try to conf- like? Did you try to tell yourself that maybe you were a bit asleep to calm yourself down? To be honest, I was a little freaked out. But stuff like this kind of happens to me a lot. Like if I'm pushing in town, I'll feel hands on my shoulders, like not people, like on the wind, and they'll yeah. push me. Oh my! So like, God. so like, I'm just like, oh, okay, and I went back to sleep. If that was me, right? This is the reenactment, right? This is the reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> da? <laughs> I'm a fucking. Sally! Nicola, Sally! Nicola! The ghost slapped me in the head! <laughs> this is gonna be in the podcast. Guys, we're just gonna pause for a second and then we're gonna be back. It's live on camera! Right, guys, so here we go. We're back. The telly's no longer there. It's a better background, I have to say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, um, I think I have a concussion. And um, <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to happen for. Um, yeah, so um, I don't know how we're just going to slightly just go normal back into this. So um, that was a great story. Thanks so much hey. for that. Um, quick question um, for number two. Do you believe in paranormal? I do after that fucking thing happening. Uh, but what about you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do. Because I think, you know, I'd like to think that stuff happens and, you know, if we go somewhere afterwards, you know? Yeah, I, 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 I like that do. as well. If that if this didn't happen, uh, I would have talked more about it. But I need to fix that telly down and see it doesn't up broke. No, um, so, guys, <laughs> um, that is it for this podcast, Sir, Do you have anything to plug before we go? Instagram, anything like that? Yeah, uh, please follow me on Instagram. It's Saoirse, uh Smith Comedy. Mm-hmm. And I'm on uh, Facebook as Sarah Smith Comedian, and I'm also on TikTok, oh, TikTok. as Sarah Smith Twenty Eight. You know, mm. telling people my actual age. Oh so my there we god! Go. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Nice. Um, right, guys. So that is it for this podcast. I will leave all them links in the description below. Please go check them out. Sarah, please come back on for another one because I really enjoyed this podcast. It was so good. Um, it was real funny. It's probably the funniest <laughs> podcast I've ever done so far. Yeah. So that's so ironic as well because you're a comedian. So it's fucking, this is great. Um, but guys, yeah, thanks very much for coming on and watching this episode, episode 44. And guys, remember, remember, most importantly, it's not the best podcast. It's not the worst podcast. It's just an all right podcast. Guys, thanks for watching and we'll chat to you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.